But it's not that they're good or bad if they leave the camp, it's that they're just looking for a livelihood for their families. Most of the migration that you'll see in the world is south-south, meaning it stays in the regions of the conflicts from which people flee. The numbers of people you see in Europe are a very, very small percentage of the actual migration in the world. If you take East Africa as an example, uh, East and the Horn of Africa, you have over 11 million people displaced in East Africa alone, and the number is only increasing with the conflict in Somalia, in Burundi, um, and uh, the dictatorship in Eritrea. So this whole region is a region of displacement. And not only that, it's been that way for the past three decades. Um, in Kenya, you have some of the oldest refugee camps in the world. Dadaab refugee camp is actually called the third largest city of Kenya. So remember that camps are supposed to be temporary settlements for refugees. They're a way for humanitarians and governments to manage a crisis, but they're not supposed to be a long-term solution. Now, Dadaab refugee camp has been in place for 30 years. People living a whole generation in that camp are not given the right to work. So they can go to school uh, and they have better schooling there than they can have in their country of origin, being Somalia, for instance, but they don't have a right to work. So it's not that they're good or bad if they leave the camp, it's that they're just looking for a livelihood for their families. So for any refugee in the world, there are three durable solutions. And that is what governments and the United Nations go by. So these are local integration, so the right to enjoy uh, the same rights as other citizens in the country. Um, or the second durable solution is return to the country of origin or to the place of origin. And the third solution is resettlement, so being relocated in another part of one's own country or being relocated to a third country. Now less than 1% of refugees in the world get the chance at resettlement. Most actually want to locally integrate but are not given the opportunity to. What does that mean? They're either not given citizenship, and that is the case for most refugee situations in the world, or they're not given the right to work, which is their right as inscribed in the law uh, in, the UN, in, in the United Nations Convention. Uh, so what does it mean? It means they have little chance at local integration, they have little chance, minimal chance at resettlement. So the only opportunity, the only option we're really giving refugees that governments are giving refugees is to return. So if the return is to Somalia, to Afghanistan, to Eritrea, where your life will be at risk, obviously that will not be the choice you'll make. So with basically no other option, people will leave. And there's no legal recourse for them to leave. So if they leave, it will be illegally and, and it will be irregularly. Refugee response has been considered from a purely humanitarian lens. So when people think of refugees, they usually think of the World Food Programme's bags of wheat arriving in a refugee camp. Uh, they think about the makeshift uh, UNHCR tents. They don't think of anything sustainable, durable, or long-term. Actually, if you look at real day-to-day -day pictures of refugee camps, they're like cities. Why? Because they've become long-term protracted living situations. And so this means that actually what happens in reality isn't what was planned for. What we need is to go beyond the humanitarian lens to look at the development lens, get the private sector involved, get uh, foundations involved, get people outside of the usual humanitarian small circle uh, to looking at refugees as actors of economic change in their countries of, of displacement. Station. Station.